You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to MD for Moms with your host, Dr. Carly Snyder. Traditional psychiatry, integrative medicine, or just someone to talk to, Dr. Carly is here to provide moms with personal solutions so that they may experience whole body, mind, and well being at this most extraordinary time of motherhood. Now, please welcome the host of MD for Moms, Dr. Carly Snyder. Welcome. You are listening to MD for Moms on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Carly Snyder. I'm a reproductive and perinatal psychiatrist, meaning I work with women struggling with emotional symptoms throughout their reproductive years. I'm also mom to three children who I'm eternally grateful for and somewhat stressed out about to some degree or another every day, including today. Um, This show, MD for Moms, is dedicated to helping women enjoy life more, to maximizing health and wellness, and to improving women's relationships with themselves and with others. So I'm going to remind you throughout the show that you can call in and ask questions directly on air. The number is 855-856-1380. Take advantage and call if you have any question or a comment. We'd love to hear from you. So I found myself late last night wrapping presents. I'm sure I was not alone. Many of you may have been doing the same because truthfully, the holiday season is upon us and there's never enough time, right? So what did I do? I didn't sleep as much. Everyone figures out a balance, but the truth is also that balance is hard and it comes with stress. The festivities, the joy, All of that is wonderful, but that sense of being overwhelmed, that sense of never having enough time for that endless to-do list, that can be less enjoyable. But there are ways to combat that feeling. And today we are going to have a really great show. And my guest, Aaron Borbet, is going to help us learn how to combat stress and anxiety. And she's going to give us some really phenomenal tips and tricks to minimize any negative feelings really throughout the holiday season. And these tips can be used anytime because realistically, life gets stressful. So as I said, she's one of my favorite guests. And if you haven't heard the shows she's been on, I encourage you to go back and check them out. There was the first one was about optimizing health during before, during, and after pregnancy. And then we had another great show about fertility. So they were wonderful. You can check them out on the bbmglobalnetwork.com. They're always up and running. So Erin has a master's of traditional Chinese medicine. She's a licensed acupuncturist. She's board certified in Chinese herbal medicine and has nearly 10 years of clinical experience in women's reproductive health. After seven years of private practice in New York City, Erin now works with women remotely from the comfort of their own homes using custom herbal formulations, nutrition, and intuitive life coaching to regain vibrant health. She lives in the Teton Valley with her husband and two daughters. Welcome back, Erin. I'm so happy to have you on again. Erin, are you there? Oh, we don't have Erin yet, but when Erin comes on, we're going to talk about health. Erin, are you with am us? I here? Oh, yes, am I there you? you are. Woohoo! There yes. I am. I'm oh, good. Here. <laughs> Excellent. So, I was saying we're going to talk about, you know, kind of remaining healthy and centered and relaxed mm-hmm. through the holidays, mm-hmm. which frankly sounds a bit like an oxymoron, but <laughs> you're here to tell us it's not, right? Right. <laughs> I'm Hopefully. here to tell you it's not. 
<laughs> Hopefully. Thank you also so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Well, um, can, we start, can you explain the work you do and why you have the experience and the knowledge? Because I know you do, but for our listeners, how you huh. can tell us how to stay sane through the holiday season. Right. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for the lovely introduction. You touched on all of my kind of skills and educational background um, with the herbs and the acupuncture and nutrition and all of these tools that are so useful in helping us feel our best. But since transitioning, well, I mean, even while I was in clinical practice too, but now transitioning into um, more of a remote you know, coaching practice, what the real meat of my work is, is this understanding that your body is wise and has an innate healing ability, that your intuition is wise, and that you have all the knowing that you need to live vibrantly healthy life, and that you are whole and with full capacity to be in the driver's seat of your experience of life as well as your health and your healing. So this kind of truth that I do all of my work from applies really well to staying sane through the holidays by reconnecting to the idea that each one of us is empowered to access that sense of ease, that sense of freedom, that sense of joy amidst, like you said, all the hustle, all the bustle, all the overwhelm, all that can come with the obligation of a holiday season. We don't actually need anything outside of ourselves to regain access to that ease. So I'm here to share a little bit about how we can do that, each of us. That's wonderful. Um, before we even go there, though, I, I think it's important. Mm -hmm. Can you define for us when you talk about health and when you talk about healthy, what does that mean for you? And how do you frame that for um, your clients in terms of, you know, when, when someone says, well, I need to get healthy um, mm -hmm. or I want to stay healthy. Um, mm -hmm. for the holiday season, for example, what, what should they really be focusing on? That's a great question. Um, well, and, and the short answer is everyone will be focusing on something different. So health, I define health as an alignment of, you know, balance of sort between our physical, our emotional, and our spiritual selves. So first, to define health for yourself, it's important to tap into those, you know, three areas and really get a sense of if there is misalignment, where that is coming from. We might be, you know, very spiritually connected, very emotionally balanced, but, but our food is is what's kind of inhibiting our sense of ease and joy. Or it could be that our, you know, emotional, you know, temperament is off, but we're eating all the right foods. And so how can we realign all of these systems? And that can look really different for everyone. And it can be, you know, complex as well in, in discovering where, where the root domino is as far as what's throwing us off. But ultimately, the feeling of health, you can kind of go in and engage. Well, do I feel healthy? Am I, am I at ease? Do I feel in balance? Do I feel in tune with myself? Do I feel ease connecting with others? These are kind of little check-ins we can do to get our homeostasis and see, how are we doing? Is there, are we out of balance? Do we need support? Do we need help? Um, so, yeah, there's these little check-ins. It's going to look different for everyone. It's not like this eating plan and this, you know, lifestyle plan are exactly what will make you healthy, but you really have to take it into an individual circumstance. I think that's such an important point because, you know, I think as a, as a culture, we are very visually focused. So mm -hmm. 
so often people think of health as being specific to, I want to be a size eight or a six Mm -hmm. or whatever, right? Um, I Mm -hmm. need to, you know, lose five pounds or say the same weight or whatever it is. It's Mm -hmm. much more about the external and not so Mm -hmm. much about the internal. And the truth is you can look a certain way, but be Mm -hmm. a absolute mess internally. And Mm -hmm. despite looking uh, as you see healthy, as you kind of consider yourself to be healthy, you're not healthy. Mm-hmm. Health mm-hmm. is a total body package. The person who's truly mm-hmm. healthy is also happy. And mm-hmm. if you're not comfortable in your skin, if you're not kind mm-hmm. of, if you're not also able to balance your time, and I always say this, you need to be able to say no. Because mm-hmm. if you're asked to do a lot of things, if you're feeling very, overwhelmed, you also need to know where your line is to be able to say to someone, hey, you know what, I'm sorry, I really can't chip in to make those, you know, brownies for that thing, or I can't do -hmm. this, that or the other, because you need to self protect sometimes. Um, The flip Mm -hmm. side is, sometimes it also takes going out of your comfort zone to find happiness. And volunteering your time can be one of those experiences. So I think it's very person specific, and situation specific. But I always just want to hammer in that health is, as you were saying, it's a whole body situation. Mm -hmm. It is not just about what you look like. It is not just about the uh, number on a scale. It is also so, so tightly related. And I think more important than anything is how you feel inside. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I I agree. You're right. And also knowing that you're right. Like it, it. that happiness won't come when you lose that five pounds or when you clear up your skin. I mean, all of these things are are fine goals, but you can actually connect to the happiness and the confidence and the freedom right now, no Mm -hmm. matter what, no matter what, you know, goals you also want to attain, um, which is really, really powerful. And that's the powerful source of, of accessing more, joy and less stress in any moment. So when you say um, your intuition is wise, Mm -hmm. what does that mean? So what I've noticed in myself, for sure, and in the women that I work with is this kind of idea that we're often second guessing ourselves that we actually, you know, have this innate knowing within us of what's in our best interest, what serves us on that deep level. And also on like a, you know, what should I choose for lunch level? I mean, it can come Mm -hmm. in at at every level. Um, But then we have kind of this like other reflex that comes in and says, Oh no, but I read yesterday that this is actually better. So maybe I should do that. And then, then it gets all confusing and, you know, we have a hard time connecting to what's, what, what's right, what feels good, what we should do, what we want to do, and, and reconciling all of it. And it can just become this scramble. And what usually I've seen and experienced is that when we can kind of go, okay, there's a lot going on, and clear it all away and clear it back and connect to that first, kind of initial innate knowing of intuition that that's where our wisdom is. We, we really already have the knowledge. Yes, it's important to, to research and to keep learning and, and, you know, filter all that through the lens of our life and our goals for sure, but also filter it through the lens of of that intuition, of that intuition because it's important and it's, it's important to our health and our happiness. Oh, and we always talk about mother's intuition, so we should also use that for mm-hmm. ourselves, right? We are mothers and we are, you know, presumably yes. we know ourselves first. We have yes. to take a short break. You're listening to MD for Moms on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Carly Snyder. And when we return, Aaron is going to help us with some tips and tricks on how to reframe the stress of any situation like the holiday season into more positive 
experiences. Have a question? Call us, 855-856-1380. We would love to hear from you. Stay tuned. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of Essential Liquid Nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take Essential products today and start to measure the difference. Welcome back to MD for Moms on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Carly Snyder, and today we have such a special guest. Erin Borbe is a fabulous licensed acupuncturist. She's a master's in Chinese medicine. She's board certified in Chinese herbal medicine, and she's a doula. So before the break, I was I promised that Erin, you would tell us some tips, some tricks on how to reframe the stress of the holidays and make it, you know, more positive, kind of get rid of the negative, the sense of being overwhelmed and anxious. What can we do? Yeah, so my so I kind of think of my first piece of advice as like the umbrella that overarches all the other little like tips and tricks, the do's and don'ts, those kinds of things. But this umbrella is what we always need to come back to as our anchor. And this is to take a moment to reframe and reconnect. When you opened the show, you mentioned the holidays feeling like there's just never enough time to quite get everything done that Mm -hmm. you're trying to get done. Yeah. And that is so true. And that leads to lots of not so pleasant emotions and stress and overwhelm and all of those things. So this reframe and reconnect is really taking a moment, no matter what's on your to-do list, to just stop and hit the pause button and kind of realize that no matter how busy you always have time to do that, even if it's a minute in the car by yourself or when you go to the bathroom or whenever you get that moment to stop, take a breath, maybe use some of the tools we'll go over and just reframe your perspective of the holiday season and reconnect to what's important to you to get out of it. And simple ways that you can do this are to think about your needs in this moment. What do you need to gain from the holidays? Do you need more fun? Do you need more laughter? Do you need more calm, more ease? What is it that you're craving from this time that is a time of connection, of abundance, of love, of joy? How can you tap into that to really receive what it is that you need? And first, we have to find out what you need and what's going out of alignment so that you can stay in alignment with that. When you take that moment, ah, and just reconnect to your why. Why is it important? What do you value? 
what do you want? What do you need? Then you have clarity and you can move forward making choices that are in alignment with that, which yes, the to-do list is still there. The obligations will still be there, but the overwhelm will start to dissipate a little bit because you know that you are moving forward with your intention and gaining access to your needs. And you'll also be more available to those around you to offer that, to give more and receive more. And I have to imagine you also, you know, taking a moment can put things in perspective, meaning, Mm -hmm. um, you know, there is always that tendency to become overly worried about the the minutia, right? The little Mm -hmm. details to make things seemingly perfect that really don't matter in the gr- the grand scheme of things, but in the moment seem very important. And sometimes it really does take stepping back and saying, hmm, you know, I'm going to breathe. I'm going to take a moment. And if I don't use the same wrapping paper for everything, really, who cares? Right. Like, mm-hmm. does it really mm-hmm. matter? Um, because it's going to save me, you know, so much time so much, you know, effort. And I'm going to have more time to just hang out with my kids. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, that's going to be a much better use of my time than driving to get this other, you know, whatever. I mean, it's a silly example, except to say that I think often we get in our heads what things should look like, right? Mm -hmm. Everything should be perfect Mm -hmm. and color coded and this and that. And in reality, no one cares as much as you would. But if you let yourself care less about things that really are in the scheme of things, not so important, you open up the door to enjoying things so much more. And I think taking a moment sounds like a great way to start. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Um, um, and, um, And just like you said before, kind of taking that moment to reconnect it, it helps you know what you need to say no to, right? And saying mm-hmm. no more, <laughs> and letting go of yeah. those, um, those things that aren't really going to serve you. They're just kind of extra that you put pressure on yourself for that perfect or that idea of perfect. Um, so, yeah. Now, when yeah. you talk to women, um, you mentioned a moment ago about in terms of like, triggers and and stress obviously everyone has their different stressors do you find that any that there are certain stressors that are more prominent around this time of year as compared to others um yeah i feel like there i mean food is always a big one um and some of that is because there's you know just a lot of food around the holiday season that isn't typical food that we have around on our day to day. So it just can be kind of come overwhelming. Um, and also an aspect of food where there may already be, um, a difficult relationship with food, um, which can make the holidays feel even more overwhelming, like a, an individual relationship with food, like, you know, a struggle with what to eat and why to eat and when to eat and how much to eat and all of that, that we have for whatever reason, a health goal or a weight goal. Um, so kind of trying to like fuse those two things, it can feel like food can be a big center of attention. And the other thing I notice a lot is obligations and family traditions, especially if you're visiting family where there's a lot of family and you have the stress of travel or you live in a place where there's a lot of family and maybe you have to go to your aunt's house and your mom's house and you're hosting something and then you have your private time with just you and your kids and all of, all of a sudden yeah. it feels like too much and, and it you does. feel really obligated. Yeah. It's like you can't say no because they'll feel bad or, you know, so then you're doing these things kind of out of guilt and that's not a very powerful place to say yes to something. So, you know, there's just kind of filtering through that piece and really aligning with where you need to say yes and where maybe you need to say no and how you can do that with grace and not feel like you're, you know, just being mean or hurting people's feelings or something. So those are kind of my two big things I see with the holidays. 
I mean, I, I hear about those things as well. I think the other component in terms of family that I would just add is, mm-hmm. you know, people, family gatherings as a general principle tend to be, you know, people, it's wonderful to get together with family, but it also tends to bring up a lot of feelings of insecurity, a lot of feelings of um, almost a regression back to adolescence for some of us, right? That feeling of, um, you know, did you get along always with your big brother, your big sister, your younger brother, whatever, and this competition and, you know, people just don't always act their best Mm -hmm. in these Mm -hmm. scenarios. And you throw a little eggnog in there um, and things can get a little tense and it doesn't have to. Mm-hmm. And almost the and the fear that it could get tense propels the mm-hmm. whole event. And mm-hmm. that is really unfortunate. But I've had many women say to me recently that they're just worried about how they're going to behave in the mm-hmm. setting of you know, facing a cousin, a sibling or whatever. And Mm -hmm. the answer is you, you know, I think we all should just try and act as we want our children to see us act and, Mm -hmm. you know, model good behavior and, you know, and also forgive yourself if you happen not to be on your best day, right? Everyone makes mistakes, God knows. I mean, all of us have had moments where we're on our way home and we're like, oh my God, what did I just do? You know, and you send a text saying, I'm really sorry. Now, obviously, no one wants that, but right. you also don't want to harbor a sense of um, shame because that mm-hmm. really negatively taints the positive vibe that should be associated with holidays and should be associated with you know family gatherings. Um, but going back to what you were saying a moment ago in mm-hmm. terms of food stress, mm-hmm. do you have any suggestions that you um, propose for women to minimize that anxiety? Yes, I do. Um, I have my five favorites. Oh, and yes. my first one is... I love them. What? I love them. I love them. I, oh, I, good, good. Yes, <laughs> so, sorry. First of all, we eat for many reasons, right? We eat for nutrition And because we need food to stay alive. But we also eat for emotional reasons and, you know, um, nostalgia reasons and social reasons and healing reasons or weight reasons. There's lots of reasons. So we have to kind of come first into alignment with ourselves and, like, just make sure we're really on board and in awareness of what you know, our, our relation, our unique and own individual relationship is with food. And this allows us to draw our line, the knowing our limits with food. This is tip number one. So it's likely during the holidays that you'll decide or at least be tempted to consume foods outside of your normal everyday choices. And this is actually a really good thing. This isn't a bad thing. It could sometimes be scary or feel like, oh, no, here I'm going to have to recover from this. But if you know your limits, if you have specific dietary restrictions for specific reasons that really serve you, for example, if you don't eat dairy because it makes you sick, that's a good reason not to splurge and eat dairy in the holidays. But if you avoid dairy because you think it has high calories and but you really, really love it, you know, and your mom makes this like super cheesy dish or your grandma makes a cheesecake and you're so sad that you won't be able to eat it. So that's another maybe you can reconcile that one. So for, tip number one is to draw your lines and and know where your limits are for the holidays. Well, and we have to take a short break. You're listening to MD for Moms on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Carly Center. And when we return, Erin's going to give us so many more tips, like many, many more. They're so great. <laughs> I got a sneak peek and I love them. And I would say if you are one of those people who can't tolerate dairy, there is a really excellent almond milk version of eggnog that I found very excellent. Ooh. And if anyone's interesting, 
interested, rather, give us a call. I can tell you, 855-856-1380, or I could just post it also on my blog. And so stay tuned. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca. 819-360-3266. Now is your time. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com. Dot com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Welcome back to MD for Moms on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Carly Slanner, and today we are talking to Erin Bourbet about how to stay calm, to stay centered, to enjoy the holidays without all that added stress. And I will say before we even go to Erin's tips, I, during the break I looked it up and the Eggnog that is made with almond milk and is thus dairy free is Califia Farms. It is excellent. I recommend it for anyone who wants to, you know, try it. And the other ones are not so good, but this is really good. So that's my tip. Check it out. Aaron, you have far better tips. Give us some more. <laughs> well, we just talked about drawing your lines and knowing your limits. And then the second tip following that is to commit to those choices, those limits that you've made for yourself. And when you're kind of taking a look at your limits, I think it's really important to look at things in a very real way. Like we talked about avoiding certain foods because they make you sick and not, Mm -hmm. you know, giving way in that this holiday, because that's just not a, not a very centered place. It's not a very Um, wise choice that's in alignment with your highest self if you're going to be sick, right? But to to kind of also unwind negative remarks that we might have about our bodies and food choices, such as certain foods being bad or that we're bad if we eat them or that we're unclean if we eat something or we might be toxic or that food might be toxic, these kind of perceptions of, of ideas that we have not based on a real cause and effect from that food and kind of unwinding that so that you commit to your choices, you move forward, you're going to enjoy, you know, that, you know, cheesecake or (laughs) cookies or that, you know, dish that your aunt makes that's so awesome. But don't think of it as now you're being bad because you're going to enjoy that. Commit to it and be grateful that you get to enjoy these good foods. Put positive feedback, positive remarks on your choices that you're making. You know, commit to not eating dairy because you want to be healthy and you want to, you know, give your body a gift this season of not getting sick from that. So <laughs> look at your look at those choices from a positive mindset versus a negative one, which is easy to do with food. And I would have to just throw in there that if you if you enjoy and if you you know have the desserts and et cetera, 
once you do and you enjoy it, which you should, the next day, don't Mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, chastise yourself after the fact, right? Exactly. Like, give, I think so many people then turn around the next day, oh my God, what did I do? Mm -hmm. And there's this sense of um, blame, the blame game, oh God, mm-hmm. I'm so bad. Yep. I mean, all these very hostile terms that, that you were using. And there's nothing good that comes out of that. There's no benefit whatsoever. You know, let it go. And that, by the way, it holds mm-hmm. for anything that you can, you know, see as a negative in any time of stress. I mean, we're talking about the holidays, but I'm just going to throw in there. All of these tips really can be used and be considered during times of good and in bad throughout our lives. Anyway. I just yep. hopped in, but keep Absolutely. on going. No, and that's part of committing, right? Is that like, well, if I'm going for it because I want it, then the next day you better still be grateful <laughs> that you went yeah. for it because you committed to that choice. Don't get off the wagon and start blaming. You're absolutely right. Like, commit in a positive to your positive choices too. And my next one is if sugar and carbs are what you crave which a lot of women do in some form, go, and a lot of sugar and carbs are around at the holidays, then go for protein and fat. Meaning, like, if you just know that's your weakness, and no matter what limits you've drawn and what commitments you've made, it might be still hard to stick to them, go for the protein and the fat at the holiday table. They will reduce your cravings for sugar and carbs, and... They will help you refrain from feeling overwhelmed, from forgetting what commitments you made, and from binging on sugar and carb, which can be easy to do. So these are things like grass-fed butter, organ meats, animal meats, cheeses, non-starchy vegetables. You know, kind of look at those things and go for them if you're starting to feel like, wah, off, off your center to bring you back so that you can just make the choices that you committed to versus forgetting it and throwing it all out the window. What about wine or alcohol? Where does that fit in? That, you know, you have to, that fits in with everything else, right? So fits in with your unique constitution. So evaluating what is wine or alcohol for you. Is it, a lovely thing and you can easily enjoy a glass and feel great about it, then you don't really need to think about your wine. If you know you can suddenly finish a bottle without having thought about it and it doesn't really serve you to do that, then maybe you need to make some boundaries with the wine. But like I see wine as I see dessert, as I see every other food. It's it's part of the package and we have to kind of tap into where the balance is for us in how we metabolize it, in how we enjoy it, and then move forward from there. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. So what's next? So so we have the like protein and fat to kind of help you get off the craving roller coaster, but also to eat regularly. I know Thanksgiving has passed but it's a common holiday where I see people, you know, have this giant family meal at like 4 p.m. And there's this, you know, tendency to starve the whole day so that you can enjoy this giant meal at 4 p.m. And that that just doesn't work very well for your body. Starving yourself in any capacity just increases your stress hormones. It throws your blood sugar off. You don't feel right, and you'll ultimately make very weird choices, poor choices, in service of your health. So my best advice is to eat regularly. Wake up, have your breakfast, have a light lunch, maybe even have a snack before you go to a party or before you host a party, such as a hard-boiled egg or a handful of almonds or some cheese and apples, like a high-protein, high-fat snack so that you can enter the holiday situation not famished and, you know, panicking about the, when the meal is coming and how can you get your blood sugar up. But you'll be, you'll have a solid foundation and ultimately really enjoy filling up your plate and enjoying your meal in a normal way. Yeah. That sounds great. 
Yeah, I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense. Also, I mean, because frankly, I think especially like with Thanksgiving and what have you, like all of us, you know, you eat at four and then you, at like 10 o'clock you're hungry, but you, it's like this weird paradox because mm-hmm. you just ate this huge meal, right. but you, you're you hungry. Like, what do you do? Yeah. It mm-hmm. makes a lot more sense to kind of try and keep things a little bit more to a schedule, you know, yeah. at least as yeah. much as possible. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, our our stomachs don't actually get bigger the more we starve ourselves. You know, they they stay the same size. So right, feed it, feed it regularly. Yes, um, yes, yes. And chew slowly brings me into my final tip, and just mindfully, almost like taking that moment to reframe and reconnect, hitting that pause button during the meal, and just enjoying and savoring. And and letting letting everything sink in, letting the full experience sink in, taking your time with it. And, you know, I'm just going to stop you on that one because I think it's interesting. If you, you know, I think at least for myself, there are moments where I'll eat very quickly just because I have to eat something and I'm running out the door. Mm-hmm. And if someone were to ask me afterwards, was it good? I couldn't even tell you because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not eating for the purpose of enjoyment. I'm eating because I have to. But it may have been delicious. And, and I, in those moments after the fact, I'm like, oh, I really should have slowed down. And because food should be enjoyable and the difference in time is actually so insignificant that mm-hmm. there's no reason not to take your time and to save your bite. You know, if you basically inhale your food, you mm-hmm. end up probably eating more than you want to, but also mm-hmm. just not appreciating the bites that you're getting. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And that's unfortunate. Yeah. And there's really, we're never really too busy to take another <laughs> minute to chew. Right. <laughs> we're, not, we're not adding hours here. So, yeah, yeah, it is a nice reminder to integrate. <laughs> now, next up, you yeah. had some tips for managing stress. Yes. Yes. So... Obviously, reconnecting, hitting the pause button, and reframing, changing your perspective, taking in the situation is going to be your best friend that you can do all the time. My favorite kind of helper to get us there are essential oils because they are easily accessible. Anyone can have them. You can have one in your purse. (laughs) They can be right there. And by inhaling and you know smelling an essential oil you get an immediate and a potent interference in what is going on in your brain so you're feeling stressed you're feeling overwhelmed and that just i mean if you've ever smelled an essential oil that you like it's like oh okay it kind of wakes you up in that way but you can then take a step back and like really see if you can unwind and evaluate the situation um, so they're like my favorite stress for staying kid. And after the break, so we had to take a short break, but afterwards I'm going to find out what essential oils you specifically recommend. If there are any, I bet there are. Mm-hmm. You're listening to MD mm-hmm. for moms on the BBM global network and tune in radio. I'm your host, Dr. Carly Snyder. Stay with us because I'm, a, I'm excited to learn which ones to buy. This is, this is good information. Stay tuned. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Jenny Friend is a licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified clinical sexologist, commonly known as a sex therapist. 
with over 30 years of experience in the field of sexuality. She's been a researcher and teacher and is further trained in human development over the lifespan. She's also a published author and a radio personality. Her specialized training in lifespan developments means she can help individuals, couples, and families through difficult developmental phases. Her primary ways of working are through the tools of cognitive, behavioral, and psychoenergetics theories and techniques. Couples, individual men and women, and families are also welcome. She can meet in her office in Costa Mesa, California, or on the Internet through Skype at Jenny Friend MFT. Call 714-210-9200. You can also send an email from her website at www.centerforclarity.org. That phone number again is 714-210-9200. Welcome back to MD for Moms on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Carly Snyder, and we are talking to Erin Borbay, who's helping us remain calm and centered for the holidays. So right before the break, you were telling us about essential oils, and I'm very excited and interested in learning if there are any in particular that you recommend. Yes, there are. Um, my, so there are, I have four that are my favorites to have on hand. Lavender is one of them um, because of its calming effect. It actually has been shown in numerous clinical trials to have a calming effect in immediately reducing anxiety and senses of panic. And it also has a clearing effect, meaning kind of like you were talking about earlier when we kind of somehow get inundated with someone else's stuff in the holidays, like our family member that bothers us or whatever. So it can kind of clear that from us, too, so that we could just stay whole and remain whole and calm. Inhaling lavender, or you can apply it to um, a point on the inner wrist, which is a calming point. It's about two fingers up from the wrist crease on the inside of the forearm. We call that pericardium fix. The next favorite oil that I have is peppermint, which is really good for tension especially when there's muscle pain or tension involved. So if you can think of headaches or upper back, shoulder, neck tension. So if your stress comes like that, peppermint's a great oil for you. And you can inhale it, place a drop on the temples, or actually rub it on the muscles themselves that are bothering you. And it'll help them kind of relax. The next favorite oil is sandalwood, which is a heart opening oil. So kind of helping our our hearts soften and just open a little bit. Sometimes in the stress and the overwhelm, it's easy to close off, hunch forward, kind of wrap our shoulders around ourselves. And we don't really want that in the holidays, right? We want to be more connected and open. Um, so if you're feeling like you have your guard up, maybe some sandalwood and rubbing it right on the chest, right over the sternum and that upper rib cage can be really nice for softening that space. And mm-hmm. then my last oil is eucalyptus, which is just a bright clearing oil and will help with practical um, like sinus congestion or cold type symptoms, enhancing the immune system, which is also an important thing to do over the holidays and you can swab just a drop inside the nostrils so you kind of have an automatic access to inhaling it for you know an hour or two while it lasts there Um, and then also just finding an oil that you like many of us just for whatever reason we don't understand it but this oil we smell it and we instantly feel happy and go for it you don't need to follow a protocol based on what other people have found useful experiment and find what you like to. Are there any oils that people should stay away from? Is there any contraindication to any specific oil? None of the ones that I talked about. Um, They're all pretty benign. If you're pregnant, um, maybe, and you're going to use some obscure oil, I would say maybe do some research or check with a practitioner just to see if there's anything on it. But as far as these ones I talked about, there's no contraindications. If you have sensitive skin topically, meaning you can react to fragrances or whatever, then 
just make sure that you add your essential oil to a carrier oil, like a coconut or olive oil or almond oil, whatever just plain unscented oil you might have. So it dilutes it a little bit and then it won't be as topically irritating. Hmm. Makes sense. Are there any um, pressure points that people can use? Yeah. Um, Well, there's the the temples and the third eye point. We call that yin tong. Very relaxing. I love to place a drop of lavender or sandalwood on yin tong just to kind of clear us and open us to um, our truth and our vision for the moment. And for tension and stress, there's a point right between the thumb and the forefinger on the hand. It's kind of a meaty point in there. Usually if you apply pretty good pressure, it kind of feels a little tender, and that's how you know you're on it. But it's great for resolving tension in the upper body, bringing any headache or neck or shoulder pain down. That point, however, is contraindicated in pregnancy, so don't use it if you're pregnant. And because that will cause uterine contractions, correct? Or, 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 theoretically. Um, I mean, it can. Is that it's right? unlikely that you would actually. Yes, that's right. It's it's unlikely you would actually cause damage from pressure, but right. unless you're like a week or two away from your due date, there's no reason to employ that point. You'd be better off have someone, you know, actually just rub the muscles that are bothering you (laughs) than rub that point. (laughs) Because it is coming. And why not? Right? Right. (laughs) Added benefits. Um, Now, unfortunately, we're running out of time, but I know you had some great closing thoughts, so I don't want to lose out on those. Can you give us your closing thoughts? Yep. Yes, absolutely. We kind of got through most of it here. But my closing thought is all of these little tools on hand, you know, have your small dress and let that help you get off the roller coaster this holiday season so that you can go back into the driver's seat of your experience and feel like you're really getting what you need from this holiday You'll trigger less to other people's stress, and you'll enjoy yourself more. And by connecting inward and committing to your own needs and truths, you'll be softer and more available to exude and emanate the love to the others in your life. And this will also protect you from discomfort and ultimately keep you on a path of healing right through the holidays so you can use it as a time for refuel and not a time that you're going to have to recover from in the new year. And I love that. I love that. And, of course, you know, the holidays are about love. and They're about being together with family and friends. Um, But for some people, Mm -hmm. the holidays can be very difficult. So if you are having a hard time, I wanted to just make sure everyone remembers. If you're finding yourself more sad than you anticipate, if you are feeling depressed, reach out for help. You don't have to go through it alone. The holidays can be very isolating and lonely if you don't feel you have support. So if you're sad, look for help. And there are resources available on my website and links that you can use to find someone who can assist you. Um, So, Erin, I I love having you on. I want to plug your website again because I really think it's awesome. And your newsletter is awesome. How can our listeners find you? Yeah, on my website, Erin Borbet, E-R-I-N-B-O-R-B-E-T dot com. So you can write up on my website. And I write a lot of articles and recipes that come out in the newsletter and on my blog. Um, and I'm also fairly active on Instagram, which is a little more of a personal view into our life in the mountains. I love connecting with people. So anyone, please reach out, send an email, share your story. Um, we all have a lot to learn from each other. Yeah. And I can just say personally that Erin, you know, I love her website. I love, well, everyone knows I love Erin, but I, I think that there are so many great tools available just even on Erin's website 
And the recipes that I've used have been really delicious, <laughs> um, but they also <laughs> have meaning and they have purpose. And that's mm-hmm. great. You know, they, mm-hmm. the one I used was about for optimizing digestion, which was really cool, actually. I didn't even realize it when I made it. And then it turned out I looked up and that's what it was. Um, you know, thank you again for joining us. I hope you'll come back um, and we can talk some more in the future. We'll find a date. And thank you to all of our listeners for joining us today. We learned some really practical, important things, some tips, some concepts that I hope you can take into the rest of the holiday season and into the new year about health, about wellness, about staying centered, and really tapping into what makes you happy, what makes you whole, and then going from there and kind of combating that sense of being overwhelmed and stressed that so many of us experience around this time of year. But, you know, Erin presented us with some really very doable, very easy options that can and should make life easier. I'm looking forward to trying them out. Um, I think the notion of taking some time, taking a moment even, and breathing is just, you know, it's intuitive. But how many of us really do it? We don't. We need to do it. So I'm going to try. I hope you do as well. The other tip is don't forget to sleep. This is important. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to sleep. Anyway, have a wonderful holidays. MD for Moms is going to be on break for two weeks. When we come back, we're going to have a wonderful show, so don't miss it. Um, This has been an episode of MD for Moms on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Carly Snyder. Until next time, be well, enjoy life, and thanks for listening. You've been listening to MD for Moms with your host, Dr. Carly Snyder. Please join us each and every week for answers to the many challenging issues moms face today on the next episode of Dr. Carly's MD for Moms. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.